Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we're talking about this. This is a new video card. This is the GTX 960 running the GM206 GPU from NVIDIA. So this is a new NVIDIA card, and I just benchmarked it against everything. The embargo just lifted. It is available online today, uh, but do check all of our frame rate results before you buy, because we take these tests very seriously and conduct them all objectively and fairly. It has been tested against the 760, the 770, the 970, the R9 285, the R9 270X, and all those cards. What you need to know about this new video card is that it is available for $200 MSRP. This specific card is the Asus Strix 960, which is the one I tested. It is available at $210 MSRP. Zotac and EVGA both have overclocking options already available, and both of those will be available at about $200, uh, no more than $210 for sure. So that's sort of the price range. In terms of specs, the GTX 960 reference will have 2 gigabytes of RAM. That is set for all cards. It will not exceed 2 gigabytes of RAM as it stands now. In the GM206, you've got 8 SMs. Each one of those hosts 128 CUDA cores, and that means you get a total of 1024 CUDA cores for the whole thing. So while Kepler GPUs might outnumber the CUDA core count, uh, they are more efficient because they're sharing a greater pool of memory. It's 92 kilobytes versus 64, plus there's 24 kilobytes for uh, some other process. You can read all about it on the link in the description below or on the annotation right now if I put that up. So that's the architecture. The effective memory speed is 9300 megahertz after accounting for the memory compression and delta color correction. And what both of those do is effectively compress the data per frame that you're storing in the frame buffer. That's the two gigabytes of video RAM. You're compressing that data by about 25%. It's using 25 fewer bytes per frame. So that's happening because of delta color correction, which is basically looking temporally at a frame, meaning over time it looks at the previous frame, the next frame that's impending, and it says, okay, what colors have not changed? And then it, it doesn't fetch those again. It doesn't need to calculate those colors a second time. That saves you a lot of memory bandwidth. And that's true with the 980 as well, so this is not news to anyone. The next major advancement for the 960 over the 760 is TDP, which is a trend in the industry right now. Even AMD has caught on. And TDP for the 960 is 120 watts. It is capable of running games like League of Legends and Dota 2 and Team Fortress 2 and generally low requirements games at 30 watts. That means this does not need to run even its fans in the case of the Asus Strix and in the case of some of the other impending devices from other manufacturers. So in this video card's case, the Asus Strix, it will actually spin down one or both fans depending on the load of the GPU. So if you're playing League of Legends on this, which is really unnecessary to have this for League of Legends, but if you're doing it, it will turn these fans off, run at about 30 watts, and you're saving a ton of power, and you're not really burning, you're not generating a lot of heat in the system that the CPU will suck up into its fan. So good all around for the entire system. The most immediate competitors to this card are going to be AMD's R9 285, which is priced at about the same price, about $210, and their R9 280, which is about $180. Below that, you've got things like the 270X and things like that. They're, they're going to be outclassed by the GTX 960. In terms of cards above this, it's really on NVIDIA side, it's just the GTX 970. That's it. That's all there is above this, unless you go way higher than that and get the 980. So what does that mean? That means there's a gap between $200 for this and about $300, $350 for 970. That is a massive gap. That is a gap big enough to drive a TI through. So I am expecting some sort of TI in the future. Uh, there has been nothing announced yet. I am not being cheeky here. We don't even have uh, any inside info. So that's, that's sort of just speculation. Uh, let's look at the benchmarks for the GTX 960. So in terms of performance, uh, you can look at all of our benchmark test methodology in the link in the description below on the article. Testing first with Metro Last Light, the GTX 960 got about 52 FPS average, and the R9 285 got about 55 FPS average. They're very close. Uh, that's basically within margin of error. So they're effectively the same performance for Metro Last Light. And that's a good thing because that means this is a serious competitor to the R9 285, which, yes, it does outperform it by a few frames, but for uh, about 70 watts less TDP, that's pretty good. That's, that's very competitive. Looking at the GTX 760 in Metro Last Light, the 960 pretty handily outperforms the 760, so this is actually a big jump from one generation to the next. 
In Grid Autosport, again, we see a slight advantage going to the R9 285, which performs at about 80 FPS, and the GTX 960 performs about 78 FPS average. These are both average numbers, and that is, again, within margin of error. It's like 2% difference. So pretty good, but not quite a definitive yes or no on whether you should buy this card over the R9 285. In Far Cry 4, again, the GTX 960 performing at about 70 FPS, and that's very handily outperforming the GTX 760, which sits at about 53 FPS. That is a huge difference from one generation to the next. That's more than 30% difference, in fact. And at that, it's actually becoming worthwhile to upgrade from a 760 to a 960, but hold on to your money. Uh, generally, you're going to want to upgrade from something earlier than a 760, because that's still a pretty well-performing card right now, unless you're really dying for, uh, for high graphics in games and you don't have the budget for a more expensive card. Now this is where the GTX 960 starts to show off and put AMD to shame a little bit. In Battlefield 4 on ultra settings maxed out at 1080p, the GTX 960 performed at over 60 FPS, 63, and the R9 285 performed at 53 FPS. And this is a game that was optimized with AMD. It is one of the few, in fact, that has been optimized recently for AMD, specifically by the developer uh, during the launch cycle. NVIDIA sort of sucks up all the other companies. So that is a big lead for the GTX 960 to carry over the 285 in Battlefield. In Assassin's Creed, somewhat unsurprisingly, because it has been optimized heavily for NVIDIA, the GTX 960 leads at 53 FPS over 48 FPS for the 285, and the 960, in some instances, will beat out the 770. I'll throw a few more benchmarks up as I'm closing out the video. You can check all of these charts in the link in the description below, including some that are not shown here. So do check those out. The GTX 960 then, should you buy it? Uh, it really depends. On the whole, this is a very impressive card when you're looking at the TDP against the performance. It performs very well, uh, and it has a TDP of 120 watts, which is lower than any other card of this performance thus far, and it's priced at $200. That is a somewhat threatening price to AMD. NVIDIA already effectively dominates the upper end of the market with the 970 and 980. That is almost unarguable. And although the price is good on the 290 and 290X, those two cards are just the best, period. So that leaves AMD owning the budget and mid-range markets, which they've always done, from the 265 up to the 280X, 285 now. And there hasn't really been any competition there for AMD. That's where the 960 comes in. There's been no real reason to buy a 760 for a long time now. And the 750 Ti is great in its own right. It's very low TDP, but it's still not as good as, say, a 270X or something like that, which is priced fairly similarly at this point. So the 960 shakes the market up a lot. It somewhat uh, invalidates some of AMD's nearby offerings, and it is very threatening to the 285, which performs almost identically, consumes 70 watts more, uh, doesn't quite have the same level of driver support. And this is, this is something that people will argue with me about in the comments, I'm sure. But uh, definitively, NVIDIA releases more drivers more frequently, and AMD's gotten a lot better with it since Omega. Don't get me wrong. They've gotten way better since Omega, but uh, there's, there's definitely that tinge in your mouth of bad drivers in the past. So at the end of the day, the GTX 960 is a very good card. Uh, it is worth buying if you're trying to build a system in a mid-range price. If you're trying to build in a budget, look at the 270, the 270X, and the 750Ti, depending on your needs. If you're building an HCPC, this is awesome if you can afford a $200 card for an HCPC because low TDP, low heat means that you're not going to be overheating your other components in a small case. In terms of the 285, it's worth considering. Uh, I would personally opt for a 960 in most instances unless I really want that extra couple of frames per second. And even then, the difference between this and the 285 is close enough that driver updates between AMD and NVIDIA will mean they trade blows with each other constantly. So you're going to see these two cards battling it out and overtaking one another. They're effectively identical in terms of FPS. So it just comes down to the other things that you need uh, and whether those are worth one company or another to you. So that is the GTX 960. Check the link in the description below for more information. You can find out where to buy it in the article, all that good stuff. Please tweet at us if you have any questions whatsoever. Uh, if we get enough of them, I may do a, a roundup video. And that is all for this time. I will see you all next time. Peace.